If I was ever weird to you once, know that I'll be thinking about it every night for the next 50 years. That's a tweet that was shared over 37,000 times because it's so relatable. So many of us struggle with anxiety and overthinking things. And it's something that I struggled with too. There's also a good chance that you've struggled with it too. And how would I know that? Because emotional abuse so often leads to anxiety and overthinking. And if you're watching this video, if you found this channel, you may have experienced emotional abuse on some level. So in this video, we're going to break that down a little bit and we're going to talk about overthinking, why it's so common with people who have been victims of emotional abuse and what we can do about it. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Common Ego community. My name is Christina, and on this channel, we talk about emotional abuse, its connection with spirituality, and we attempt to answer the question, where do we go from here? So if that all sounds good, like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you can be notified when I post new videos. So without overthinking it, let's talk about overthinking. Like I said, this is something that I've struggled with and I've always struggled with it, but I realized it had reached an all time high after I got out of an emotionally abusive relationship in my adult life. So why does this happen? Why is it so common? And if you think about it for just even a few minutes, it makes perfect sense. Because if you have somebody there who is questioning everything you do and putting you down here and there, even if it's subtly, if this is somebody who's important to you, it's gonna affect you on some level. No matter how strong you are or you think you are, it's going to have an impact. And that voice becomes the voice in your head. So in one of my older videos, I talked about how if you've been in an abusive relationship or if you are in one, you, you get to the point where you don't want to do anything around this person because you just know you're going to be told that you're just doing it wrong. Like you don't want to cut an onion because they're going to come, even though they don't cook, they're going to come over and tell you how to do it the right way and point out how wrong you're doing it. Maybe even make fun of you for it. You question everything you do before you do it. And you end up walking on eggshells because you know this person is super sensitive and you can say something just unintentionally and cause a narcissistic injury or cause that person for whatever reason to go from here to here in no time flat. So you end up thinking about everything you say and do. And if the person that you've been with is fond of stonewalling and silent treatment, that can definitely lead to overthinking too, because you'll end up in situations where that person's angry with you and you don't really even know why. So you sit there and you try to think of what you could have done wrong, what you could have done to upset this person. And you try to think, why could they be angry with me? And you replay all of your thoughts and you replay everything that went down, all of your actions. Could they have taken this this way? Could they have taken that that way? And it, it causes you to overthink literally everything. So it makes sense. If you're struggling with overthinking, if you're struggling with anxiety, it makes perfect sense. But that doesn't mean that you have to keep struggling. Identifying the problem can often be a really big step in the right direction. So once you identify that you're dealing with anxiety and you're overthinking things, you can start taking steps to step away from that. And it's not necessarily easy and it's definitely not something that happens overnight. So I want to share my experience with this a little bit. And in being completely honest, I've never, it was never something that I identified and addressed as, okay, here's a problem I have to solve. And I think that might be because there was just so much else going on. What I focused on for me in the aftermath of an abusive relationship was healing. And I knew that there were things I needed to heal within myself. I knew there were reasons why I ended up in this situation. And I knew that the situation was meant to show me things that I needed to see. And to be honest, it truly did. And somewhere along the way, overthinking became less of a problem for me. So one of the best ways to combat overthinking is that self-work and self-love. So when you work on the things that maybe you've been ignoring, the things that you know need to be healed, but you kind of just 
it was just never the right time. For me, that was a big part of stepping away from the overthinking. And it got to the point where just one day I realized, hey, I used to do that. I used to do that like crazy. And I don't really do it so much anymore. And I'm not going to say I never overthink things. I do. But it's, it's not as much of an issue for me. So another thing that really helps me, and I know this isn't going to be something that's going to be for all of you, but I think there's a way that we can apply it to everyone's life. And so that thing that helped me to stop overthinking things was just this, just being on YouTube. It's, it's quite a journey. I know some of you are on YouTube, and I, I think you'll back me up on that. You have to stop overthinking if you want to do this. This process and the, this, this whole journey kind of forces you to stop overthinking. Because if you do overthink, you're not going to do anything. It's going to keep you stuck. So how this can apply to everyone's life, I think, is if you follow something that you're passionate about, the passion will drive you towards where you want to go instead of driving you towards the overthinking and the anxiety about it. So like I mentioned, I wasn't in a position where I identified the overthinking and sought out ways to solve it. It kind of resolved itself when I worked on that really deep inner healing and I forced myself to do something that was out of my comfort zone and something that I was passionate about. But if you are in that place where you identify that overthinking is a really big problem and you just want to stop right now, there are some things that you can do to kind of cut back on it. It's not going to cure the problem. It's not going to make those thoughts completely go away forever. But there are things you could do in the moment to help wean yourself off of that pattern. So one thing you can do is identify that you are overthinking and instantly distract yourself. Think happy thoughts. Think of something that truly makes you happy or makes you laugh because you can't be overthinking things and be laughing at the same time. It's just, it's just not possible. So use whatever is the path of least resistance for you to get there. If it's putting on a comedy, do that. If it's diving into a really good book, do that. Or maybe you can just do it by changing your thoughts, just shifting your thoughts to think about something happy instead of something that you're obsessing over. Another thing you could do is to put this thing into perspective. Is this something that you're going to be worried about a month from now, a year from now? And if it's not, then it's probably not worth your time right now. And if you find it helpful, you can put it into perspective in the grand scheme of things. And, you know, people are struggling with this or with that. Is this really something that anyone is going to worry about? Anyone else other than you? Now, sometimes that can be dangerous because that could get into the territory of beating yourself up for the way you're thinking or feeling. And that's not the goal here. The goal here is to really just put it into perspective. Because when we start overthinking things, they can really snowball. And a problem that was this big can become this big and, and bigger. It, it, the more you think about it, the bigger it gets. And it's important to bring it back to reality, to look at it for what it is instead of what it's become in our heads. And the third thing that you can do to stop overthinking in the moment is to tell yourself to just get over yourself. Now, I know that sounds harsh, right? But whenever we're overthinking, we're probably thinking that other people are thinking about us more than they actually are. And it's not necessarily an ego thing. It's a stress and anxiety thing. But we're thinking that people are obsessing over the things that we said or did. And that's it, almost never true. People are involved and absorbed in their own lives and, and what they have going on. So they're probably not thinking about what, what you think they're thinking about. And if we're going to assume that we know what they're thinking about, let's assume the best and not the worst. You could be right, you could be wrong, but in the end, there's one way to look at it that's better for you. And the outcome, the outcome in reality is going to be the same. They're going to have their thoughts and you're going to have your thoughts. So the fourth thing you can do is focus on now. Focus right here, right now in this moment. If you meditate, if you're really in the habit of meditating, meditation could be great in these moments. If you're not in the habit of meditating, it's probably going to be a little bit too much of a stretch for you to go from overthinking to meditating. But what you can do is check in with yourself. 
Where are you? Where physically, where are you? What are you feeling? Are you okay? What are you doing? Is it something that you're anxious about? If not, this is a good time to remind yourself you are in this moment and you are okay. The more we focus on now, which is really, really all we have, we can't tell the future. And even when we try, we are often wrong, right? So it's not going to be helpful to do that. It's not helpful to live in a future that does not yet exist. So if you think about now and where you are and that you are okay, keep focusing on that and the rest will work itself out. And the fifth thing you can do in the moment to stop overthinking is to force yourself to focus on something that you're grateful for. So you can't be grateful and regretful at the same time. You can waver back and forth, but you can't have thoughts of being grateful and regretful at the same time. You can waver back and forth for sure, and you can do it really quickly. But the more you focus on being grateful, things that you are grateful for, the more those thoughts will grow. Whatever we feed will grow, right? The grass is greener where you water it. So thoughts of gratitude are going to grow and you're going to be more grateful for the things that you have in your life rather than thoughts of regret. If you water that, if you continue to follow those thoughts of regret, you're going to end up with more regret and worse feelings. So follow the thoughts that make you feel good. So those are my tips for overthinking. I hope they help you. And if you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you'd like to see more like it, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.